today, um, I'm going to dive into the first section of uh, eight different speakers that we're bringing to you today to cover a wide variety of topics of what's been going on and what's new at Arista over really the since the last time uh, we got together, which was the last Network Field Day. Um, since then, I, I haven't cut my hair, so uh, it's, it's a, a testament to the fun summer we've all been in, we've all been having. Um, so, what's new at Arista? Let's dive into it. First off, in the last year or two, we've seen an incredible shift, as Tom had mentioned, going from not just really large, high-scale, production-oriented data centers, but watching Arista Networks products get picked up and deployed in the public cloud in organizations that have hundreds and thousands of virtual private clouds across WAN backbones, internet connectivity, carrier backbone environments, uh, deployed hundreds and thousands of devices in large campuses, and also in branch and regional sites, connecting those back. Underpinning all of these is connecting back through into Cloud Vision platform, now delivered as a service and also on premises, that enables the consolidation of telemetric state data stored in time series for rapid troubleshooting, root cause analysis, faster return to operations, and an observability fabric that we've been building using the acquisition of Big Switch as a foundational building block to enable the aggregation of packet level data, control plane data, and so on back into a consolidated centralized network that lets us then do analytics, traffic recording, and so on. Seeing large scale production deployments across all five of these transport domains is really heartening as you think that these are the core five transport domains for most enterprises around the world. Now, an interesting thing came out at the last network field day, which was we did the, we announced the acquisition of Big Switch Networks that morning and then rolled right into the field day. Well, interestingly enough, it seems to be that MA cycle is lined up with tech field days because again, this time we're able to announce the acquisition of Awake, which is a security company fo focusing on network detection and response. So you've seen Arista go from the acquisition of Mojo for Wi-Fi. Metamaco delivering ultra low latency, really focusing on a, on a trade plant, big switch networks, delivering modern observability, monitoring fabrics, and a converged cloud fabric architecture, up through now and including network detection response with Awake. What Awake does is brings to the table the ability to have a set of sensors that run on premises, in the cloud, and in SaaS apps that feed traffic and feed data, control plane data, into what's called the awake nucleus, which runs cloud or one premises. Coupling that with an expert system called AVA, the awake virtual assistant, that enables autonomous hunting and th response to threats detected using network traffic. What's really powerful about this is how the system works though. Well, in isolation, this is an amazing set of technology to identify security issues and threats that exist inside of the network environment. When coupled with a observability fabric and universal cloud network architectures, the ability to enable traffic to be identified, streamed back from any source through to the awake nucleus and maintain the persistence of those sessions builds an incredibly powerful set of capabilities and starts building amazingly strong synergies across all of these different product lines. Now, I wanna dive into something a little bit different, kind of a rapid transition from, let's talk about a really cool acquisition to let's talk about a few problems we're seeing to kind of broadly set up a lot of our other speakers today, a few problems in our networking industry. And I'm gonna try not to go into all of these in too much detail, but your know, network fragility, right? Well, we've seen customers and vendors put so many eggs into the networking basket, right? For 20 years, we've watched venture capitalists believe that the fastest way to get scale was to take something and then shove it into the network, whether that's firewall or a IDS IPS or, you know, a network analytics capability. I'm actually listing all the service modules I used to look after 20 years ago in my career. Um, with all of these eggs in the basket, how do I find a time to upgrade? How do I find the time to get to that next software version to make a change without too much risk? Sometimes we can't even find a change control window. We've seen 
the tremendous lack of software lifecycle management strategy. We've seen networking vendors avoid integrating with the Nessus, Rapid7, Tenable type of products of the world that are part of a vulnerability management practice. We've seen this move to SDN, which I love conceptually, but somehow people thought that was, we need centralized control planes, which meant that we compromised a federated control plane, which meant that when that centralized control plane went down, in many cases, we've seen the entire network fall to its knees. We've seen configurations that I joke were designed during the era of that 70s show. Configuration models and configuration, uh, literally the actual config files, they were designed to be human readable. And with scale, with change to the network, with too many eggs going into that basket, what we've seen is a configuration file that is unfortunately neither human readable nor machine readable. And as much as I, I'm loath to say it, I, I think there's, well, there, there's bluntly more structure and meaning basically to a Windows registry file than there is to many of the network configuration files that I've seen rampantly running around. We've ignored platform system of records. We've had it as an industry trying to force automation onto snowflake architectures where everyone is unique and different. It, it's been rough, right? When I look at the mistakes we've made, when I look at the fact that our industry hasn't evolved, that we've left behind or we, we hold on to the past sometimes so strongly that you know we've done a disservice to our clients, even down to a simple one, packet counters. It's 20 years ago, I got into an, an, uh, I got into an, a customer executive briefing and I got yelled at because I was told, Doug, we don't drop. We drop and we count and it's very, very different. And for the last 20 years, I've been moving forward thinking that yes, Dropping traffic and counting it was the right call. But was it? Was it really? Yes, I can tell you with absolute certainty that 1.5 million packets were dropped between the time I typed show interface counters now and whenever the heck the last time I typed clear counters was. And that's actually just enough information to really mess you as a network engineer up because it's just enough information to give every peer group license to start throwing spears and assuming that it was their packets. Shouldn't nowadays I be able to tell you what traffic dropped, whether that traffic was important, whether it was recoverable, why it dropped, what was forwarded that caused it to drop, what was creating the congestion event? Couldn't I magically even tell you about transit drops and what dropped there? We need to do better. We need to be able to drop and count, of course, but I think it's also equally important that we start capturing and contextualizing and creating actual information that's actionable, that lets you troubleshoot, that lets you have effective day two operations, that improves your overall experience. And the last one is why did dynamic stop at routing? For 25 years, we've had routing protocols for 30 years that have worked is miraculous. But we need to take that concept of dynamic routing. And why don't we have more dynamic cryptography, dynamic tracking, dynamic controls into the network as well that are dependent and working with the dynamic reachability substrate. In short, the network of the future needs to adapt and needs to evolve at the speed of the cloud, not just at the speed of how fast I can flip my swivel chair back and forth from one keyboard to another. And I, I told Tom I would make a USR Courier HST reference. I think it was 1986, I got my first 2400 baud modem. I think it was a Hayes smart modem. And I could barely keep up sometimes typing faster. I think it was 87 or 88, I got a USR Courier HST and I've never looked back. My network has always been faster than my ability to put my fingers on my keyboard and get my job done, right? We've always measured ourselves in networking as a bit of a contest on speed of ports, speed of interfaces, speed of convergence, density of ports, speed of packet forwarding latency. And we've always created these measurements to try to say one vendor is faster than the other. 
Nowadays, though, I think the world's changing. And it's about speed of the cloud. It's about speed of provisioning. It's about speed of consumption. It's about speed to remediate vulnerabilities and software defects. The game's changing. We need to enable networking nowadays to be executing and reacting to external sources of truth at the speed of software. 